All right, here's up, guys. Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to do a video talking about six-man pressures with your choice of zero, hots, or potential peel pre uh, coverages behind it and why you would use those. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, Sideline Replay Company we use. I've used them for the last uh, five or six years at the schools I've been at. We use it at Bishop Kenny right now. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out GameStrat. Dome Hats, the headwear company we use. This is one of our brand new fitted custom Crusader logo on the front, BK on the back, Dome on the side. If you're looking for completely customizable, check out Dome. Stock hats suck. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for uh, coaches gear, sideline gear, our practice gear. Uh, you can build uh, a player store, a fan store through there. They are in the shoulder pad world with pro gear. They're big in the baseball world. They do everything. It's a one-stop shop. Check out Baker Sports. Just Play Football, which is the uh, playbook software we use. We use it for our installs, game plans, presentations, and meetings. I use it on my Patreon site. Best play drawing tool on the market. Make sure you check them out. Difference USA, ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. So anytime you got to use a partner in a drill, they got to hold a bag, you got to provide resistance, you risk either getting bad reps, injuries, other things. Difference USA is just you and the ultimate striking machine. It attaches to the racks that are already in your weight room so you can get thousands of reps in season, off season. If you want to strike violently, practice striking violently. So when you're choosing to use six-man pressure, I think there's a couple of different scenarios that you've got to think about and you've got to look at, all right, when you choose your coverage behind it the way you want to play it. And to me, there's kind of three simple options, all right? Obviously, there's always other things you can do. You can, all right, combine some things depending on formations, uh, sets that you're seeing, game plans. But really, you have three basic choices to me behind six-man pressures, all right? You can play them with hot coverage, which is more vision and break integrity with eyes on the QB, right? So two under, three deep is how most people talk about it. We do it a little bit differently than some other people. We do it more like Brian Flores does with his house pressures with the way we play our guys. All right, but it's more eyes in the backfield, more eyes to the run game if it shows up. All right, is a post player usually involved, so if anything pops, you've got somebody in the post. All right, but it's a simpler uh, way to handle coverage behind six-man pressures if you are trying to be safe in your thought process. Right, so when I say simple, I don't mean... It's pretty simple by alignment, all right? I don't mean simple in the execution of it. I mean simple in the thought process of, uh, of um, sending six. I'm being really aggressive with the pressure and the path, but I'm also creating eyes that can be involved, all right, in the run game, all right? We're trying to get things out, get, ball, get the ball to bounce out to where we have the extra hitters. So it's a little bit safer version of six-man pressure. You can go with traditional zero, all right, where you just dog it out and you play man-to-man -man everywhere, all right? When you do that, you don't have a post player. All your eyes are on guys outside, so if they run verticals and there's something that shows up in the run game, all right, so maybe like six-man pressure, Q run, and you don't fit it right, and there's nobody left to play the Q because everybody else is running with routes on the outside, right? But you can get everything covered down. You should have an extra hat, right? So if it's a six-man pressure with somebody playing man on the back, in one-back scenarios, you should have seven there so you should have an extra hat all right but it's the more aggressive way to play six man stuff now to me it's the simplest uh, as far as the alignment is concerned as long as you're not seeing a bunch of tackle over guys that are ineligible you've got five players that have to cover five eligible guys if you're seeing base formations base scenarios all right you should be able to get your guys to line up quickly so a lot of people like zero pressure because you can diagram multiple pressures as long as they understand you've got one you've got two you've got three all right, or you could decide to peel it, which is a version of man free. So you're going to have edge rushers peel the back. So normally, when doing that, I would suggest that it's outside backers, safeties, or somebody else coming off the edge because you really, I don't like defensive ends peeling running backs. All right, especially for us, we play a lot of tight front stuff. So four eyes, even if they're moving outside, I don't like them peeling. So if we were to decide to do that, we would do it with outside linebackers. Now, why would you do that? You get man coverage on ones and twos, okay? If the back is not a big part of the passing game, all right, or if the back stays in protection, you still get six in the pressure, all right? And you also get a post player to help you with things over the top, or maybe if a run breaks, you get a post player that can help get somebody on the ground, all right? So when, where, why, how would you use those things, or why would you want to carry all three, all right? So if you were to just diagram a, a simple base pressure, all right, so 
let's just say for argument's sake right now, I'm going to keep it as outside backers off the edge because if we talk about peel pressure, all right, if we talk about peel pressure, we can, and let's just get fancy and say we're going to do that and that right there, right? So if we're going to talk about the peel pressure in the video, then I'm going to draw it up with outside backers coming off the edge because that's how we would peel things. So if I played this in, in the first version, which is a hot world, all right, two under 3D, my vision and break players would be my left safety and right safety. My post player would be the middle safety. The hot third would be the corners. Okay? Now, when we are doing that, all right, we are expecting, especially versus one back, we're sending six. We think the ball is going to come out quick. All right? So we're expecting our guys that are vision and break guys versus access throws, stand-ups, nows, bubbles, all those things. We have guys that have vision on the quarterback. So if the quarterback in the shotgun has to throw a bubble, a stand-up, a now, all right, normally he's going to grab the snap, raise up, give you an indicator of where the ball's going, his front hand comes off, and we can all drive. All right, so that vision and break theory allows us to get to the nows, the access, the quick throws, because we are driving off the quarterback. But it also gives us a chance to have two guys that if there's a mesh involved and there's run game involved, we have two guys that instead of matching routes on the outside, so if they ran like slant bubble to each side or if they ran four verts or something along those lines, those four players would be out of the equation. They'd be completely gone because they're man players, right? But when we, when we run it this way, all right, we still have every interior gap taken care of. If we were going to run it with this game, we have to make sure that the four eye, we would cheat to a three, and we have to make sure that he can get all the way to the backside A gap so that we cancel out gaps, right? So if we were to do this, okay, it would be more versus one back, empty scenarios, all right, where we feel like we can get the ball to come out rather quickly. All right, now, if they leave the back in protection, all right, if they leave the back in protection, now they can pick up all six, but we still have one-on-one -on -one matchups, but now they could possibly get to a drop-back world, which is what we're trying to avoid when we run, all right, the, the hot pressure stuff. We're trying to avoid them getting to the drop-back world because we have less players to cover things down the field. So if they can protect it, all right, and... and hold up versus the pressure, the ball doesn't have to come out of the quarterback's hands quickly, now we get into some issues in coverage, right? So one of the reasons we do it is, is, is it's a lot safer. We feel like we can handle runs that pop or throws that pop if we miss a tackle or have bad leverage. We feel like we can handle it better and get guys on the ground because we play with more zone integrity, eyes in the backfield, all right, than we do if we were seeing man-to-man, -man, all right? Now, to me, where the issue comes in is when you start getting two back sets, all right? So when you start getting two back sets and you're running this type of pressure now, I love it versus two back runs because it essentially creates, all right? It essentially creates basically an eight man front, all right? Because you got guys that aren't playing straight man. But again, people argue that zero does the same thing. So I'm not here to argue one way or the other. All right, but when you get two back sets, now the issue becomes in the two-back world. Let's just say we go. All right, in the two-back world, now the issue becomes full seven-man gap protections. So let's say they turn the whole protection back, and they've got a C-gap player, and maybe play action or whatever. They've got a D-gap player. However, they want to block it: full slide, half slide, insert the backs. It's now seven on six. All right, in the pressure game. So that now means when they max protect it, all right, when they max protect it, that now means that they can hold up to six players coming. Because we're in a vision and break world, we're not going to add anybody on, add anybody on, and that's going to be my next thought, talking about zero pressures. We can now add people on, right? So when we're vision and break, we're not going to add anybody on. So it's their seven versus our six. Now that means, even though they only have three receivers in the pattern, the way we're playing it, we're not necessarily pattern matching it. We're not playing it man-to-man. -man. There's going to be more voids in the coverage simply because we're dropping less players. We only have two underneath droppers. So now if the quarterback has a chance to hold on to the football, all right, and, and get a chance to let routes develop a little bit further down the field, now that coverage is going to become a little bit of an issue for you because now they're max protecting, they're taking care of the pressure, and the whole idea of you running a hot pressure is to get the ball to come out of the quarterback's hands. And now the ball can't come out of the quarterback's hands, right? So when you go to a zero world, 
All right? And it, it, for us, the way we, we diagram blitzes with those six, the back end is five skill players. So, again, doesn't mean we match up every week, but we should be able to match up a little bit better because we have five skill players. Now when you go to a zero world, you get everything covered down, right? So if you get stand-ups now it's bubbled, it's just a matter of you tackling people because everybody's covered down, right? It's truly man-to-man. -man. You get two players that can bracket the backs, all right? Now, the great thing about the zero world is now when you get these type of schemes, you can add players onto the pressure and you change the numbers to where now when you get add-ons, it's their seven versus our eight if the quarterback wants to hold on to the ball. So when you're playing a max protect team that you're trying to pressure, sometimes you might be better in the zero world because now at the back stay, you can add people onto the blitz and always get an extra helmet, right? So some people call it, all right, hugging the back up, green dog, whatever the terminology is. I'm not here to argue terminology. It's just adding on. Your player that you're playing man blocks, you hug rush him so he can't run screen, but if he stays in protection, you're adding on because now we're going to make it eight on seven, right? So when you're facing max protection, the zero world sometimes is a little bit better way to make sure you can always get one more than the offense has if they're trying to hold on to the ball and throw it down the field. Now, you're man-to-man -man everywhere, so you got to win. And if any runs pop or if it's any QB runs, like bash theory sometimes, that could be an issue, all right? If your man players are running, all right, so if you got like front side bash and let's just say you didn't get it gapped out, so now, when you get, if you get like front side pass, let's say an arc, and you get this scheme right here, okay? So now you've got a bracket, so these two guys are getting used to playing men. So in the bracket world, I'm going to take the first and the widest, and then I'm going to take the second, I'm going to be the cutback guy. Well, a lot of times what ends up happening in that world is you don't have anybody on the queue in the run game, right? So I know we've got a lot of bodies moving. I know we've got a lot of things going on up front. But if they somehow get that blocked up, to where they're able to run some version of a power scheme, all right, and now you've got your edge pressure that sees the bash theory, so he's trying to contain it. Your man guys see the arc release and that, so they're running with it. A lot of times in these zeros, you might get the quarterback to rip right down the pipe, and you can't get him on the ground because you don't have anybody left, all right? You don't have anybody left, so you can't get the guy on the ground. So it's a little bit more aggressive than the hot pressure stuff. If they max protect, you can get extra players into the pressure. And depending on how long they hold the ball for, I don't know if they're going to get home or not, but you can't sit there and hold on to the ball forever because now you're going to make the numbers eight on seven. All right? It's a little bit easier sometimes to line up to multiple formations because you're just telling guys, hey, you got one, you got two, you got three. And then when you rep it in a five-minute period, you can come out in eight different formations and have your guys line up to it, whether it's a tight end, a tight end wing, trips over here, quads over here. We have those five. Our, our five skills got to figure out those five. So a lot of times it's easier. You start to get shifts, trades, motions. You're just running with or you're bumping, all right, however you're doing it. So it becomes easier than checking coverages, uh, you know, multiple zone coverages or pattern matches that have to check. So a lot of times six-man zero just becomes an easier way to get lined up and go. But it doesn't make an automatic answer, even though you're applying pressure and you're trying to gap things out. All right, Just because a kid is gapped out as a, a four-eye or a slanting technique, if that tackle blocks him four yards inside, the B-gap's not really gapped out anymore because that, that guy's now in the backside B-gap because he got a down block that took him six yards inside. There's going to be more running lanes. So you can't just say when we do this, everything is accounted for. All right, So the zero world is a little bit better way to make sure you get extra guys into all right, the, the pressure if they max protect. But remember, you've got nobody behind that level to get anybody on the ground, okay? The last way would be kind of the in-between method where I can still get guys added on, or at least one guy added on, all right? So I can get one guy added on, if I were to go in a world that I said, all right, lady, this is going to be zero peel, which is essentially an aggressive way to play man free. All right, so corners and safety still have ones and twos. In this scenario, we don't play the deepest back in the backfield man to man. That's the peel guy. All right, so if it's two back with a sniffer, Y, 11 personnel, whatever it is, we're going to play man on those three, and that is going to be the guy that we peel. All right, so if we had that, edge pressure, 
edge pressure. And again, let's just say for right now it's that with that gain and that gain. Okay, so now the Sam and the Will are responsible for peel. I've got number one, I've got number two, I've got number one, I've got number two. Okay, there is no number two on my side, so I've got to go to number three on the other side, and we don't play the tailback man to man. So now I'm going to get a six man pressure pad that I feel good about. Okay, I'm going to get a post player because now I don't have to cover the tailback because I'm going to peel them. So instead of being in zero and having my five on their five, I'm not covering the tailback, I'm peeling them so I can gain a post player. So the post player helps me with over the top throws. It helps me if anything breaks, get a guy on the ground, right? And I can always get this to seven on seven in the max protection game at least. Okay, so if you got the max protection world again, full slide drop back theories. Well, now I've got six. His guy blocked, he can hug rush, add on, green dog, whatever you want. So now I've got seven on seven, and I've got a post player who's got eyes, all right, on the QB, all right, or at least zone integrity as an extra player. So now he's deep in the middle, and then he's the guy that can get guys on the ground. So if a run pops, now it's, gonna, it's not going to hit its head on the goal post. I've got a guy there that can try and get somebody on the ground because he's not out chasing man-to-man -man anywhere else. All right, so again, this would be a world where a lot of teams, if they don't use the back in the route, all right, so if their back is, is always going to be in protection or is always going to be inserted inside, and he's not a guy that gets out there in the route, all right, then these peel pressers are really great to use because you're still going to get your pressure where you want it, all right, you're still going to get your pressure where you want it, okay, and now if that back does release, he's accounted for. All right, the pain in the neck with this, and sometimes what guys will do when they, when they use these pressures, all right, they may bull rush and change their technique and be thicker because now if you get the peel, you may need to create some type of integrity to get contained because now if I peel as an edge rusher and the four eye stays inside, right, now I lose the edge to that side and quarterback scramble becomes an issue. Okay, so anytime you're playing man, quarterbacks getting flushed, scrambling, that always becomes a bigger issue than if you're playing guys with uh, vision and break or zone eyes because now if routes are going down the field, everybody's got their back turned, the quarterback runs for, all right, for days with nobody ever seeing them. In the vision and break world, at least you've got two underneath players that have their eyes on the queue, so if he does get flushed, they're at least there to rally and get them on the ground for a shorter game, all right, as opposed to the ones you see in college in the NFL, man free, matched up, good quarterback that's athletic, finds space, tucks it up and runs for 15 yards. Yeah, because everybody else has got their back turned playing man or matching patterns, okay? So if you're going to live in the six-man pressure world, to me, you've got to kind of carry all three of these things, and then in your game plan each week, you've got to kind of figure out which ones you like and why. Okay, so if I'm getting a lot of one back, a lot of empty, okay, a lot of one back empty stuff, and I feel like I can play my vision and break theories, and if the ball comes out quickly because they can't protect the quarterback, all right, we're in great shape. If I'm playing a lot of 11 personnel, 20 personnel, and their theories are seven man max protect, I don't know if I want to use my vision and break or my hot pressures because now I'm going to send six, they're going to keep seven in, and they're going to throw the ball down the field into a coverage that isn't really made to play things down the field. All right, so when you pressure on passing downs, the idea is either to get the quarterback off his launch point, all right, the video we did last week about moving the spot, changing the spot, or the idea is to get that ball to come out quick, all right, to get home towards the quarterback where you're either hitting him, affecting him, getting hands in passing lanes, making him move. That's the idea behind pressure. If you pressure and you don't get home and he's able to stay on the launch spot, on, on launch spot, right? He's able to stay on his spot in the pocket. Well, now the routes down the field are going to give you more issues. If you're man-to-man, -man, you've got to win man-to-man. -man. If you don't have a post player, you've got to win without help over the top. If you're vision and break, now you've got less guys in several areas to where com certain combinations, you're going to have a hard time defending if you can't affect the quarterback, right? If you man pressure, you can always assume that you might be able to get one extra versus max protect stuff, but now you don't have help. There's nobody in the post. There's nobody on quarterback scrambles. There's nobody if runs pop, right? So if you man straight zero pressure, that has its price, all right? But then if you go with kind of the in-between to where you send six, but you play it as a peel, now you get man-to-man -man on four of the skills. You've got to peel the back, okay? You've got a post player 
who can help you defend the middle of the field over the top, but he can also help you if there's screens, scrambles, things that break. He's a guy that's not matching a man. He's not playing a man. He's not turning his head away from the action. So he's a guy that's got his eyes on the action the whole time. He gives you that kind of safety help to get guys on the ground if you don't get home with your pressures. So if you're carrying six-man pressures, I think you need to look at carrying all three versions of coverage behind it. And then again, if you get exotic and play some matching coverages, the formations, or some different ways that you can do it with only five guys in coverage, so be it. All right, I've seen a bunch of different things that can work if you're only seeing certain formations or if you only blitz a certain formation and you say, hey, we're going to be three for two over here and we're going to lock the backside with two guys over here. I've seen a lot of those things work. You usually, depending on where the back is, as long as the back gets out to the side where you have an extra defender, you're good. If he ever gets out to the other side, now there's issues. So usually it's a zero hot peel world when you are sending six because you're running out of coverage op options on the back end. All right, so I hope this video helps you guys out with your six-man pressures, determining uh, how you should play coverage behind it, when you should think about using certain pressures depending on what you're seeing, right? So to me, one back, you think you can affect the quarterback, get away with your vision of breaks and your hots. Two back, you don't like your hots because they max protect. Now maybe you got to go zero. They have some dudes, quarterback runs, you're not comfortable in zero. Now you got to go peel to get a guy in the post, right? So there's always ways to protect what you're doing while you can still carry your aggressive mentality into game plans. All right, so I appreciate all of you watching uh, this video, following Play Fast Football, following me on YouTube. Remember to subscribe, all right? We're growing every day. Uh, still gained over 120 subscribers last month. We're pushing um, now 25,300 subscribers, something like that. So that is awesome. Thank you so much. Notifications so you know every time I do a video like this or I go on YouTube Live, I'll be on YouTube Live tonight, probably at about 8 or 8.30 doing a week seven recap, talking a little bit about college football, talking a little bit about what we do, how we did, what we've got going on in our program, and then as always, asking questions or, or looking for comments from other people. What are you seeing? What's going on in your program? What are you defending? What are you having to block up front? What coverages are you seeing? I want that to be a QA. and I've done it for the last four or five weeks. I'm going to keep doing it during the season. So notifications on, let you know when a video comes out when I go live. Okay, and then as always, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like it or don't like it, it's your opinion. I appreciate you watching. Comments, I try to respond to every comment that's on a channel that I see on my end. All right, if you're still in your season, good luck to you. All right, if you got a game this Friday, good luck to you unless you're playing us. That's the only time during the season that I won't root for somebody is if they're playing against us every other week. I hope these videos help. I hope you guys win. I hope everybody's healthy. Getting towards the end of the season now. All right, so... Every game counts. Make sure everybody understands, especially seniors. Every game counts. Every snap counts. Make sure you are doing your best to maximize your opportunities. All right, thanks for following Play Fast. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you guys next time.